one of the ways that I used to get paid as a bird dog is I would get paid per lead. Now, what that means is you're literally paying a bird dog if they're going, whether it's driving for dollars or they're finding listings on Craigslist for you, um, whether they are gathering people's information for you and you pay them per lead. This could be anywhere from $1 to $5. Uh, who I was working with, they paid me $3, and I used to pay my bird dog that I had on my team. I would pay them $0.75 cents for their leads that they would bring to me. And so, really, I say it depends also on the area you're in. So, for a higher-end area, I say you can pay them $5 per lead. But if, you, you know, if you're in a, an area where there's a lot of vacant properties and it won't be too hard to find any, I say $1 is fine, $2 is fine. So, it all depends. And uh, pay per task. So, being a bird dog is not just about the leads, okay? Um, you are also, if you are a bird dog, you're gaining experience. So, you can do different tasks that a wholesaler might do for them to gain their leads. And so... You can pay for, I used to get paid for putting out bandit signs, putting notices or flyers on doors, um, doing different tasks, and you pay them for that activity. Going to properties and taking pictures, that is a good one. I was paid, I believe, $15 for every property that I would visit. Um, I would pay my bird dogs $10 roughly. And so, yeah, that is, um, those are some of the activities that you can do, or for example, that you could pay your bird dogs per task for. Pay at assignment. Now, this is one of the, another one of the ideas you could do to keep things simple if they are bringing you deals. So, when you get the contract, not when, not at the closing, but when you get the contract and you know things are lined up to close already, you can go ahead and pay your bird dog whatever fee out of that. The thing is, you don't know how much money you're going to make because maybe your buyer might negotiate with you and different things like that. But if you already have cash on hand at the assignment, when the seller signs a contract with you, you can go ahead and pay your bird dog like, you know, $500. I say anywhere from like $100 to $1,500, possibly $2,500, just depending on the deal and how much of a spread there is. And so in that situation, you really don't know how much money you're going to make on the wholesale end. Now, uh, that's where you would probably want to go with the $100 to $500 just in case your buyer tries to negotiate. But in this particular case right here, the next point, I will tell you how you can go ahead and give your bird dog more money um, without there being too much of a stretch or too much of an issue, okay? So you pay with an assignment contract. That means they will have to wait until closing the same way you do, but you have their assignment contract in there with you. So well, your assignment contract says, uh, I'm Ellie assigning the contract to, I'll just use my mentor for example, uh, to Hanzo. He's buying the property from me, okay? If I had a bird dog who brought me that lead, I could say, uh, John, I'll just use the name John for example. So, I'm getting, let's just say, $5,000. John, uh, let's say I'm giving him $1,000. So, I could say in a JV contract, John is getting $1,000 and I am getting $4,000 from that deal. The whole assignment is $5,000, but John is getting $1,000 and I'm getting $4,000 over here. Community, period. Community. So, the, what I observed over the past few years, talking about the concept of getting into the real estate industry without necessarily becoming a wholesaler because, you know, like contracts may freak people out. Um, people may not know how to talk to sellers. People may not know about the whole negotiation process, but they want to go ahead and get into the real estate industry. Different things like that. Being around people who can help you is really what just boosted a lot of people's confidence. Like, if you find me this deal, I can have it in a contract where I can pay you this amount of money, then it's like, okay, well, how does that work? You can show them the video. You can show them by example. You can diagram it. You can talk about how deal structure works. You can talk about assignment contracts, and you'll have something to present to someone. How else would you get that information, though, if you're not part of a community who can share ideas? We can bump heads in a positive way and have, like, clean, nice debates about what would be ethical, what isn't ethical, but also making sure that we're being there for each other in good ways. All the content is still there, and it's all for free, so you can watch it to educate yourself on what bird dogs could possibly be doing for you and your business, and when you get your bird dogs, you can uh, have them join that group so they can learn exactly what they could do, what they would like to do as far as being part of your wholesale real estate operation. And then, of course, they can get some inspiration on either becoming a wholesaler or starting their own bird dog business. It's social learning. I study and I share only so much. Uh, I know it seems like a lot, 
but I learned a lot from you guys. Everybody who's in the Bird Dog Real Estate community, I learned so much from everyone who joins. I, I have private conversations with people, whether it be by DM or phone call, email, whatever the situation is. I learned a lot from you. And so when I also see other people teaching each other, that's pretty much the beauty in it. That's really all I want is social learning, everyone learning together, bringing new concepts, new ideas, ways to innovate and bring everyone together, and not just in this community, but in real estate in general. Because then the more we are all strengthening each other, the better the real estate industry will be. And I know some of you may have heard that in three states, I know it's Illinois, Ohio, I forgot the other state. Wholesaling is actually illegal without a real estate license now. I just think it's really good for um, experienced investors to go ahead and reach out to, and this isn't an age thing, but whether it be younger investors as far as being young in their real estate careers, I think it's very important for people to go ahead and open up, share their secrets, and do everything like that. Because as we all know, in the climate of 2020, we have a lot of things going on. Like It's pretty noisy outside right now because of the rain with Hurricane Laura. That Hurricanes, those produce real estate deals. Everything going on in the economy, those will produce real estate deals. Yes, it's good for us, but we also have to make sure the mindset is there where people aren't going in all the way money hungry. So we have to make sure the mindset is formed to where you're giving uh, people advice, not just about this is how a deal works, this is how much money you can make, blah, 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 blah. No, it's also this is how you approach a seller. This is how you have compassion without being wrapped up emotionally in a deal. How to politely limit your business relationship with your bird dogs, acquisitions, and wholesale managers. This is um, something that's important for pretty much all entrepreneurs who want to become, uh, hey Armand, who want to become business owners. There's a difference between an entrepreneur and a business owner. An entrepreneur doesn't need to hire employees, but a business owner means that you have operations going without you being involved in it. An entrepreneur works in their business, a business owner works on their business. And so when you hire employees, when you hire bird dogs, when you have acquisitions teams, you have to let it be known like, hey, I'm the boss. So um, we're going to have to limit this relationship. Now, in a lot of cases, you won't run into that. Uh, at least in my experience, we didn't really run into that too much. But even in my business partnership, it was like, I'm in a new business partnership now with a new team. And we are all independent. We all do our own thing. And... In my previous business partnership, it was too much. It was too personal. It got into everything way, way, way too much. Even on a equal business partnership scale. Hey, Rashid. And so you have to set business limitations. Now, if you're friends and y'all get into business together, it, it, that just happens. That's what I'm in now. You know, we were friends and now we're business partners. But previously, it was we started out being business partners pretty much. And so it's like, okay, we have to set this boundary. This is personal life. This is business life. All right. And so when it comes to people who you would consider to be under you, who are working for your business, you have to let it be known. Okay. I'm the boss. Um, this is what I need for you to do. And this is what I'm going to be doing. But you know, this is when you can call me. This is when you can contact me. If you email me, I'll get back to you when I can. If it's not pressing, if it's not urgent. I probably will not be instantaneous with you, but if it is like directly, you know, if they're saying like, uh, if there's something going on at two o'clock PM and they're like, Hey, I'm not going to be able to make it, or I'm not going to be able to do that by two o'clock PM. Then that's when you have to be like, okay, cool. Taking instant action, stuff like that. But if they just want to be like, Hey, what you doing? Like, if y'all aren't cool like that, if y'all aren't friends, you're going to have to be like, Hey, don't ever ask me that again like in regards to the text you sent me on this date i'm going to have to request that you never like however you need to do it if you're a boss and you're not acting like a boss if you're acting like too much of a friend i, I made that mistake in my other business um i had an assistant and we were friends before and it just uh, first of all I, it was all my fault <laughs> it was really all my fault i did way too much um trying to be friends way too much and so um and, and not separating that enough from the business you know in your business so if you aren't wanting for people to be like expressive or creative in your business you have to let it be known like hey this is gonna be kind of strict here um, and that wasn't the case for me uh, we're very creative so it was like you know whatever you think about I'm totally over to it but